Merry Christmas uh, for you and for all the Palestinians and for all the world. Uh, Mr. Hassan, like, you know, could you tell us today what is the message of Bethlehem? Bethlehem where Jesus was uh, born, uh, how its situation uh, and like what is the message of Bethlehem today? Today we are celebrating Christmas. We are receiving the patriarch in uh, we, we receive, uh, in a parade uh, that are going to receive. Uh, we will start the receiving the patriarch from uh, Rachel's tomb area, and then we will take the patriarch and coming here to the manager square, where thousands of people from Bethlehem and other villages and town will uh, receive the patriarch in uh, celebrations and uh, activities that can. Uh, spread the spirit of hope and joy for all the people. In this year, day, we always uh, keen to uh, ensure that we as Palestinians do have hope for a better future, do have hope for having peace in this land. We would like that our message of peace and hope that have launched by the birth of Jesus Christ more than 2,000 years ago will spread from Palestine to the whole world, from the town of Bethlehem. Like, you know, despite, you know, you are, Palestinians have the hope, but this, the current situation is very difficult. Like, you know, Israelis are increasing their measures around Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a touristic uh, village and, uh, sorry, a city. And the situation is going worse and worse because of the Israeli measures. How can you have hope despite all Israeli measures? Well, this Christmas celebration comes uh, this year with uh, uh, remarkable challenges. But we as Palestinians are determined to carry on these celebration and activities. These celebration activities do target first the children who do have the right of living in uh, dignity, living their humanity, living their childhood. So by this we are, uh, we spread, uh, we send the message to the whole world that we are looking to have our freedom, we are looking to have our dignity on this land, but we are celebrating and we will still exist in this land and we will still have our right to live in a good uh, situation. Like the municipality and the Palestinian officials decide you know, to, reduce, like, you know, the, like, to reduce some activities. Can you tell us about that? Well, this year a decision was made to go on for the celebrations, to have the uh, religious celebration and all activities related and associated with the Christmas uh, feast. Uh, but some activities that are not associated and that accompany this kind of uh, 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 accompany Christmas celebration was a little bit reduced. But uh, we have been uh, clear that, that the Christmas celebration, the religious celebration, and all the celebration that related to give the spirit of hope and happiness for children will continue. People have to feel Christmas. Our president, Mahmoud Abbas, was also keen to say that go on for your celebration. This is not only celebration for the Bethlehemite, not for Christian, not only for Muslim, but this is celebration for the whole world. And we hope all the world will celebrate with us Christmas one day when we have also our uh, liberty in this land. Uh, Wasim, uh, first of all, Merry Christmas and most welcome. Merry Christmas to you and your team. Thank you. Uh, Wasim, could you tell us first of all, what does it mean, One Voice? What is it exactly? Uh, One Voice is a grassroots organization working to, uh, towards a two-state solution and we're working to end the Israeli occupation and build an independent Palestinian state. Uh, working also to empower young Palestinians to be part of the decision-making process in Palestine. Talking about young uh, generation, you know, how can you describe the, the situation of young generation in the Palestinian uh, territories? I think it's very difficult given the current situation because um, first there's the expansion of settlements in the West Bank. There's a, a very uh, extreme government inside Israel and young Palestinian people have lost hope in the political process and they're working uh, very, very hard to believe, to have some hope toward a good future. Like you are adopting uh, an environment uh, resistant or popular or what's called popular resistant. Yeah. What method or what kind of like resistance you are using against the Israeli occupation? Uh, one voice in general uh, like to encourage young Palestinians to uh, 
practice nonviolent activities in the West Bank and Gaza. And uh, mainly our work here is to give the young leaders tools so they could resist the occupation in a way. So for example, we've done uh, hundreds of uh, planting trees campaigns in the West Bank. We also have um, worked with young Palestinians to protest settlement expansion and boycott settlement products in the West Bank. So this is the sort of activities we do in general. Today we had an activity, you know, sending a message from Bethlehem in Christmas time to the world. Can you tell us about it more? Well, first, uh, our youth leaders and One Voice staff would like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. And also, it is the uh, a very special uh, occasion since it's the birth of Prophet Muhammad. So, uh, the message today is thank you for everyone, all the countries that voted for Palestine to be a national state. Um, and thank you for everyone who stood by Palestine's side in this long political process battle against the occupation in the West Bank. We also like to encourage all the countries that haven't voted for Palestine to start voting for Palestine because voting for Palestine as a state means that you vote for life, you vote for independence, you vote for, you vote for the, the right of Palestinians of self-determination. What, what do you do exactly to well, today we have uh, we started a small protest uh, protest here uh, near the big tree. We uh, we asked uh, uh, just the foreigners who are pilgrims coming to Bethlehem today to take photos with the youth leaders and uh, take their photos home with them. And uh, we uh, we shared like flags. We thanked also Greece since their parliament have voted for Palestine two days ago, and we think that's a, a great step in uh, toward independence for for all Palestinians. Again, and finally, your uh, Christmas message as a youth representing uh, the Palestinian youth in the Palestinian territories. What is your message in my last question? Um, my message would be that uh, in this really beautiful day, I think um, peace can only happen if the occupation ends in Palestine. And the Palestinian young people, they want the right to participate, to be part of the decision-making process. So. Um, everyone, I encourage everyone, all the countries to support young Palestinians, to support our rule and decision makings inside Palestine, and most importantly, to support the right of Palestinians to live in peace and live in independence. Thank you, Wazim Masri from One Voice Institution for Youth in Palestinian Territories, and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. The economical situation, we were talking about, like, you know, the Israeli measures and, you know, the Israeli control of tourism. What do you tell the world, especially, you know, the pilgrims who want to come to Bethlehem, especially Israel is, like, you know, leading a rumor campaign against Palestinian territories in general and Bethlehem, that it's not safe, it shouldn't come to it. What, what is the message of Bethlehem eyes to the whole world? Well, there have been big propaganda this year that Bethlehem may not be safe and that it's better not to go to Bethlehem to celebrate Christmas. I think our uh, policemen and our Palestinian Authority have sent a very strong message that our, that our authority are able to make sure of having a sec good security measures in the, the, this land. Uh, this land more than uh, a lot of uh, newcomers from Palestinian Authority, uh, new Palestinian men, have came to ensure that people will celebrate in a very secure measures and in safe situation. Besides that, our situation here, that all people are keen to give this message of safety for the comers and visitors who will visit Bethlehem. People of Bethlehem usually always welcome visitors and welcome them to have an uh, enjoying good uh, time here. How do you think the, uh, the tourism, tourism in Palestine, especially in this high season, has been affected by the political situation now with the uprising and the clashes? Yes, uh, well, of course, uh, as everybody knows, we're still a state under occupation. And every time we have problems because of the occupation, uh, the last few months, uh, the daily suffering of the Palestinian people, of course, affected uh, the uh, like everything in Palestine and especially uh, tourism, because when we talk about tourism, we talk about people coming from all over the world. And when they hear about the situation, uh, sometimes they hesitate to come or uh, they cancel uh, their uh, booking uh, to come 
and uh, visit Palestine. But despite uh, all these problems, despite the daily suffering, despite all the challenges, we managed here in Palestine and especially in Bethlehem to receive during the uh, the past uh, during this year more than 2.2 to 2.3 uh, million uh, tourists uh, visiting Palestine, visiting Bethlehem, and uh, of course uh, tonight uh, our statistics show that uh, uh, more than 7,500 uh, tourists will uh, will uh, spend uh, at least uh, one overnight in Palestine tonight, and of course many of them, uh, many of them will stay for uh, more than uh, one night. Uh, of course, in addition to tourists coming visiting Bethlehem uh, during uh, the day or uh, tomorrow until uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, so what I mentioned uh, was the overnight stays tonight in Bethlehem, but not uh, we don't have clear statistics about how many uh, tourists will visit uh, uh, Bethlehem uh, today and uh, of course tomorrow other days. So would you say it's less than every year, the percentage? Well, uh, of course, it's not uh, the number that we, we are looking for uh, or the overnight stays, but uh, uh, despite all the problems, I think it is good we managed to bring all these tourists and uh, I believe that the uh, together the, the ministry and the private sector have been working hard and especially uh, recently to, to try to attract all these tourists and to convince them uh, that Palestine is safe and they, that they should come and visit uh, Palestine, especially on Christmas Day. Thank you very much, Mr. Ola. Could you tell us uh, and tell uh, PNN viewer what does this association mean? Well, this means that we want to increase the relations between Iceland and Palestine in all aspects. And because of the situation, because of the occupation, we have been occupied as well with the solidarity with the people who are struggling to be free. And uh, we do it in all... Uh, means we can find in the political. We have volunteers coming to Palestine. We have a collection fundraising. We support these days, especially projects in uh, Gaza. Uh, today I am bringing from Iceland material for uh, artificial legs, as we have been doing for the last six years when we started the project of bringing uh, and making uh, artificial legs to people who have lost their legs and we are in the same way supporting the medical relief the Aisha uh, Association for women and children and so on and so on and then we like also to have uh, volunteers in the area who are witnessing what is happening and trying in their each in their own ways to give some support uh, even just to show the solidarity show that we care how many times you visited Palestine? About 20 times. And it's the first time during Christmas? No, it's not the first time during Christmas. I have been in Bethlehem actually before. But uh, now I'm with my wife who has been volunteering here in the West Bank now in these terrible last three months. And uh, I'm very happy to uh, be able to take a holiday from my work and at the same time, same time uh, uh, do what I have to do also to uh, show solidarity and it's a very very special uh, feeling to be here in Bethlehem uh, even the year which is passing away fortunately it is passing away because it's been a not a good year at all not only in Palestine of course but many other places a terrible year for the people but Bethlehem is a city of peace and it's a city of hope and it's a city which reminds us to care about other people and try and bring justice and peace. May I ask you about, like, you know, how uh, Iceland people look to the Palestinian issue? We are very fortunate in Iceland that we have a great majority of people who are concerned about Palestine, who support the Palestinian people. And we are also fortunate to have the political situation in such a way that ever since our association was started in 1987, just before the Intifada, the first Intifada, we were established on the Day of Solidarity, uh, 29th of November, which was also the Day of Division in the year 1947, and uh, the start of the Nakba. But uh, we have ever since enjoyed the majority and the unanimous majority in support of the national rights of the Palestinian people and the return, 
the right of return for the refugees. And this was confirmed in 2011 when the parliament did it for us to uh, do it on the day November 29th that Iceland recognized Palestine as a fully sovereign and independent state within the boundaries of 67 and at the same time to reiterate the right of return for refugees. Uh, we, this was done unanimously and it tells, I hope, somewhat about what Iceland and the Icelandic people uh, think towards Palestine, where they stand. Like, coming back to the current situation, like, you know, Israel is destroying the two-state solution, it's destroying the peace process, it already destroyed it. So, as a people, as a person coming from Iceland and knowing the background of the conflict, what is like, you know, the best way or that Palestinians will resist the Israeli occupation with? Well, for us as a uh, part of Europe and as a uh, partner of the U.S., because Iceland, uh, whether I like it or not, has been a partner with U.S. ever since we were occupied by the U.S. in the war. We were occupied uh, in 1940 by the British and then 41 the Americans came. And when it suited them, they left in 2006. But we still have a special relationship in what they call uh, security or, uh, let's just say, military. And uh, the same goes with Europe. We have, even though we are not members of the European Union, we are members of an economic uh, cooperation. And uh, we uh, do belong to Europe. And we look at it this way, that Europe has to face its responsibility. Of course, we will still claim that U.S. has the main responsibility and is the only part, really, which could turn around the policy of the Israel. But Europe also has this power. It should, uh, it should shoulder its responsibilities and use the peaceful means they have for boycotting, for sanctioning, and for divestment. There is a full reason to support this movement, this Palestinian international movement, that we, I have heard from my friends here, Christian friends especially, who uh, uh, come from abroad and, and from South Africa. And I remember my friends already some 10 years back saying we're coming from South Africa that, and being here, that they were experiencing that the apartheid in Israel and occupied Palestine is even worse than in South Africa. And there is a way, there is a way, there is a peaceful means to deal with this. And we think this is the boycott. And do I think... You, do you, sorry, do you think that like the decision that made by uh, European Union to boycott the settlement products is enough to force Israel to like to pull out its uh, decisions and it's destroying the peace process? Now I should actually call my wife to answer this question because she did not think it was enough. She is a municipality politician and uh, she proposed uh, that Reykjavik should boycott goods from, from Israel, not only from the occupied. But I think it is an important step for the European Union. It's an important step in the right direction. It is not enough. We should go the way as was done in the case of South Africa, and it will, in the end, help Israel. It will help the Israeli nation, and it will help the unborn generations of Israelis who must not be brought up in the spirit of hatred, and they should kill and eliminate their neighbors of same age. It's terrible to, to listen to some of the Israeli politicians, I will not name any names, but to listen to them that the mothers should be killed, children should be killed, because they will all become terrorists otherwise. And, 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 and talk like this is so sick in my, in my eyes, it's so terrible and, and, and that you really bring your children up in this spirit, it can only hurt. And if we can help the Israeli to come by peaceful means into the right direction, to change totally, to change totally its behavior and its attitudes and its relations with their neighbors. And 
find out that justice and peace is the only way into the future if we are to survive. Like coming back to the current situation, like you know, you said uh, that you have visited uh, Palestine 20 times. Each time, how do you see Palestine, especially like, you know, how do you see Palestine d despite all the, the, despite all what have you, like all what Israeli are taking a lot of measures? How, do, how can you describe Palestine each time and the last time you visited? There are many sides of it. One side which does not change. And through all the times and through all the years and the bitter experiences, I always meet the spirit of friendship, hospitality, generosity. And I come to a refugee camp in Gaza and I find it. I'm invited for a tea for the best they have. And this, this generosity, this hospitality is so special and it shows that the respect for others and respect for yourself is still there in spite of everything. This is important. The other side of it, the occupation, has only become worse and worse as the years go by. When I came first in 1990, it was easy to travel. It was easy to travel to Gaza. Today, I don't think I'm allowed. Last time I was not allowed to enter Gaza bringing aid, bringing humanitarian aid, bringing artificial legs to people who have lost their legs in war. And I don't get through Eres. And it is impossible to go through Rafa before I could come through Rafa easily. So the situation in this case has the siege, the siege on Gaza, the wall here, uh, the situation now in the West Bank, my wife experiences this. That how many people have been killed now? Shut down in the street, young people mainly and children, because they were... What's the way to stop it? How, how, like, what do you tell the world to stop all this aggression? The way is to ask people to open their eyes and open your own eyes and you witness what you see and you tell about it. And in the end, this has to change because this comes only to a dead end. This does not bring anyone any place. This can, of course, only hurt the Palestinians, but let's not forget it also hurts the Israelis. It also hurts the Israelis. Let's just remember what happened to the Vietnam warriors, the Americans who went to war in Vietnam, hundreds of thousands. At one time they were 600,000 and they thought they would win a war in Vietnam against poor people, against farmers. And they were using enormous military power. We remember them carpet bombing whole areas, using, uh, using the orange, uh, Agent Orange, which was dioxin, which was poison to destroy the forests, you know. And still people are dying in Vietnam. But who were the big losers? There was the Americans themselves, oh, yeah. the occupiers themselves. And they have hardly recovered from it yet. And we know that tens of thousands of Americans are destroyed persons because of this. And this is the same which will happen because the Israelis are of course people of flesh, blood with soul as we are ourselves. And they, they will be hurt by what they are doing. Like coming back to the situation in Bethlehem, celebrating Christmas despite all the sadness and despite all the Israeli aggression uh, and Israeli measures. How do you see Bethlehem and what do you tell people? Because Israel is telling tourists and pilgrims who want to, who intend to come to Palestine, it's not safe, uh, it's danger. So you are now in the spot celebrating Christmas in uh, Bethlehem. So what do you say about that? I feel very safe here and it is safe for anyone to come here and I wish more would come and enjoy Bethlehem at this time. I went to and my wife, we went to the Lutheran church today at five o'clock and we look forward to the mass in the evening. And it is very important to come together, to come together and, 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 and fresh, refreshing the ideals, the ideas about Christmas and the Christian message. Uh, of this uh, feast 
and uh, they are that's a message of of, of peace it's a mes message of justice and it's a message of hope and it's a message of love of caring about other people and uh, for me this is a very important and and uh, and uh, I know for my wife as well, this is one of the happiest moments of her life to be here. And uh, we are very, very grateful to be in Bethlehem at Christmas Eve 2015. Okay, I had uh, the head of uh, Iceland Palestine Association. Thank you and we welcome you all the time and we wish you a Merry Christmas and a good time in Bethlehem and in Palestine. You are most welcome, thank you. And happy Christmas and Merry Christmas to all of you. Khafir, uh, could you tell us, uh, please, like, you know, what's the current situation? How we can describe it on the political level? Despite all, the, like, Israel is, like, increasing major, increasing its aggression on the Palestinian people. Palestinians, despite that, still have the hope, especially in these days, in the Christmas. So, how we can describe the situation? Clearly, Christmas is a Palestinian message of hope. The messenger of peace that millions around the world are celebrating was born here, a few meters away from where we are in Bethlehem. And we are very proud to say that all Palestinians identify with Jesus as a symbol for our cause. At the same time, that we are very proud of Christmas being a national day for all Palestinians. You could see people here at the square that they were all celebrating, Muslims and Christians. You could not distinguish between Muslims and Christians because it's a national celebration. You can hear now the mosque, the Omar ibn Khattab mosque in Bethlehem, and we are very proud of that coexistence because here, Palestine, as President Arafat used to say, it's a holy country because it's Christian and it's Muslim. It would not be holy if it was only Christian or if it was only Muslim. And about the current situation, it, it's very, uh, you know, it takes us on both sides. From one side, we're celebrating peace with Jesus Christ and hope. From the other side, Palestine is mourning two Palestinians that were killed over the past few hours in another criminal action of the Israeli army at Kalandia refugee camp. Khafir, like, you know, PLO distribute like the President Abbas message in the Christmas. So could you tell us what the main like objective in this message, what's the main message? And President Abbas, which is the head of the political, uh, the political head for the Palestinian people, PLO and Palestinian Authority. I think President Abbas uh, sent a message, first of all, to all Palestinians, but he also sent a message to the international community. When he refers to Palestinians, he's talking about, once again, Christians and Muslims, most of the Palestinian Christians have been expelled by Israel and so they are celebrating Christmas outside their homeland. They have been denied the right to be in their homeland by the Israeli occupation. And therefore the president was addressing to them, asking them to hope and to continue working for them to be able, hopefully next year, to be in a free country, being able to freely worship and live in their own country. When it comes to the international solidarity, he mentions the Christian groups that have supported divestment against companies that are profiting from the Israeli occupation. For example, G4S, a Caterpillar, and other companies that are, have been uh, profiting from the occupation from this war crime, which is the colonization of Palestine. And also he has been highlighting, President Abbas, the excellent year we had in the relations with the Holy See, with the Vatican. It's important to reaffirm that we sign a bilateral unique agreement between any Arab country and the Holy See, uh, whereby the Holy See recognizes the state of Palestine on the 1967 border, including East Jerusalem as our capital, whereby we reaffirm the importance and the role of the local church in Palestine and their institutions, and particularly what President Abbas would refer to uh, as this blessing, which was the canonization of two Palestinian women, Sir Maria Alfonsin Gattas and Maria Malawardi, a few months ago in uh, the Holy See. Concerning the real situ the, the situation in the ground, Israel, as I said, uh, increasing more. What is the like you know the future of the situation if Israel continue these measures? It's obviously clear that Israel is not interested in any uh, peace talks and moving toward peace. So, what's the future? Where is the situation is going? Uh, especially, we are in ahead of a new year uh, soon. I think the Israeli government uh, has succeeded. In, in killing hope in the minds of many people, including Palestinians and Israelis. And the Israeli government is succeeding, unfortunately, in being able to destroy the prospects 
of a two-state solution on the ground. What we have now is one state and two systems, which we refer to as an apartheid regime, which is what we have currently in Palestine. Where are we going? I don't know, but I can clearly say that despite all efforts by the Israeli occupation to kick us out of our country, to continue colonizing Palestine, despite the fact that Bethlehem is surrounded by 18 Israeli settlements, a split by an illegal annexation wall, here we are. We are celebrating in Bethlehem. We are celebrating not only Jesus Christ, we are celebrating because Christmas is a message that we are here. We did not leave. And I think that's a message of hope that we should keep carrying. I've come here really to, it's the first time here, so I'm really coming to learn, uh, experience what it's like to be here and understand what the situation is and perhaps in my own little way bring a little bit of peace by talking about it more and then come go back to England and perhaps be able to tell people about what's happening. As I understand from you, you came walking. Which country is your past and how did you see the situation? I went from uh, Italy to Croatia, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Montenegro, uh, Albania, uh, Macedonia, Greece, Turkey, Cyprus, and then and then here. Uh, I experienced a lot of different religions, you know, very very lot of different religions, and I experienced a lot of places that have encountered conflict, uh, like in the Balkan War, uh, or like in Cyprus, and it was so encouraging to hear some of the signs that peace is achievable that you can begin to live with with your with people that you have uh, been in a, a war with and also other, a lot of groups that are working very strongly for peace and it's just wonderful to meet them and then connect with them and it seems to you seem to encourage each other by doing that you you told me that before we start uh, we are being live like you help uh, Syrian refugees can you tell us more about that and why and how did you see their situation that that was uh, that was incredible uh, I knew that maybe one time in Greece probably or Turkey I would meet Syria uh, refugees probably Syrians coming the other way I was walking for peace towards uh, Jerusalem and they were walking away from war. Uh, I saw some on, on, on ferries, uh, very sad to see, and then I landed up on an island, a very small island, Greek island, and for about two weeks I uh, helped, helped refugees. Uh, they would uh, smuggle to cross from Turkey to Greece. They were in a terrible state. Um, I, 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 and, and I carry a book now where I ask people to write messages of peace. They wrote having been in war, and they wrote having been tortured, having been bombed, uh, lost limbs, lost family, and it was so um, emotional, so poignant to to get messages from them. It was it was very sad to see people escaping going away walking away from war because that was the only thing they could do and and very desperate to see people not knowing where they would be going you know hopefully they will get to somewhere safe but for your visit in Palestine how did you see the situation uh, and how did you see like you know Palestinians asking for their freedom and for their dignity to live in peace and to get rid of the Israeli occupation what do you think about that well I, I feel as though I'm an innocent. Uh, I, 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 I know from the news what I see in England, uh, and I now I'm here learning from, from talk, people, talking to people like yourself and, and finding out about what the situation is. And I, 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 like I'm walking for peace, but I'm just one person. And like coming here now, I'm learning. So I, I don't feel I'm qualified to say this is right or that's wrong. But, but I'm, beginning, uh, yeah. I'm beginning to see. But as, like, as a human, you don't think that people deserve as innocent people to live in freedom as all other people to live away from occupation, away to get rid of the occupation and to live in justice. So that then they can live in peace if they get rid of the occupation. And 
Don't you think that it's a human demand to live in peace without occupation, without anyone control you like other, any other people all in the world? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, yes. There must, there must be f freedom for everyone. There must be respect for everyone. Dignity for everyone. And and like you say, all, all that happens, and then peace comes. So yes, definitely. For your experience here, we are in where Jesus was born. Jesus bring a lot of good methods to the world. Like you know, he bring human dignity, freedom, justice. And you feel that Bethlehem is surrounded city of settlement and walls, but despite that, people still have hope. It, it's it's wonderful to see that, that there is hope, because I, I can imagine, I mean, I'm hard to imagine because I've not experienced it, but it must be incredibly difficult. So it's wonderful mm -hmm. to see that there is still hope, yes. Mm. And in the Christmas, what is your last word for Palestinians? I just hope that that you that the, the the dignity, freedom, reconciliation. That's another word that I've I've been walking for, as well as peace. I hope that that all comes very soon. Mr. Paul uh, Hens, Mr. Paul Hens, thank you, and most will come in Palestine, and we hope enjoy it, and we will hope as Palestinians from you to work for a real, a real and justice peace. Thank you very much indeed. It's been very good to be here. Okay, thank you.